like I already introduced, I'm Sibili Mutuakai from Botswana International University of Science and Technology. I'm going to talk about the application of tech neutron method in detecting diamond in kimberlite. So this research was done at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna, Russia. Okay, now the problem statement. So the present technology of detecting kimberlite, the diamond in kimberlite requires excessive crushing of the ore to expose diamonds. Excessive crushing destroys mostly uh, large diamonds. And these are the ones which generate more income for the company. So what you see on the figure there, it's a 69 uh, carat diamond, which initially was a 100 carat diamond. And through these crushing processes, it got uh, damage to almost half. And the company lost around a uh, $1.3 million. So Botswana is one of the leading countries which is producing high quality uh, diamond. And these diamonds uh, contribute around uh, 35 to 40% to the revenue of Botswana. Now, the proposed solution. The proposed solution is to use a uh, detailed neutron method. The tech neutron method is a non-destructive technique uh, used for analyzing the elemental composition of a material. So it allows uh, detecting diamonds within kimberlite without crushing the ore. And then the diamond bearing ore can be separated from the barren ore. The diamond uh, bearing kimberlite can be gently crushed to avoid damaging uh, diamonds. Now, the tech neutron method. So what you see here uh, is general view of the tech neutron method. So here are the detectors which are around, arranged on the sideways of the, of the tray and the tray here. And the neutron generator, which has an, an alpha detector within it. So these neutrons are produced when deuterium interacts with tritium producing an alpha particle and a neutron. So these alphas and neutrons are emitted in opposite direction. And the neutrons have a fixed energy of uh, 14 MeV and a speed of five centimeters per nanosecond. So this type of alpha detector here, it's a special type of alpha detector, which is position sensitive. So it measures the coincidence of these gamma signals and the alpha signals, and also allows to know the direction of uh, the neutron and its momentum. So with this technique, it's possible to predict the size of diamond and the position of diamond. The presence of carbon signal is used as, a, as an indication for the presence of diamond. So now, the TNM equipment arrangement. So what you see here on the left hand is the schematic diagram for the TNM technique. So here you see the conveyor belt which transport uh, the trays to the inspection zone where they're going to be irradiated with fast neutrons. And the gamma emitted from this uh, Kimberla is going to be detected by these detectors here. These detectors are is the BGO detectors. And then these trays are going to be separated here by the selector, who is going to separate uh, the diamond bearing kimberlite from the barren ore. So what you see on the right is the arrangement of equipment in a shipping container. So here what you see uh, on the left is a neutron module showing the BGO detectors here and the neutron generator here. And on the right hand side, what you see is a tray containing the kimberlite ore and a diamond imitator, this red or brownish thing here. So this diamond imitator is going to be inserted in this hole 
and it say irradiated. So here what we see is a two turn feed hopper where the oil is going to be loaded and the neutron generator on the right. So here what you see is a dosator. We distribute the oil in trays and on the right hand side, what you see is the tray itself. Now, the TNM in really mining scenario. So what you see here is a kimberlite ore containing two diamond inclusions here. So these diamonds were detected in Mira mine in Russia using the TNM technique. So for more information about this, you can get it from uh, the source given there, the detection of diamond in kimberlite by the technician method. Now, uh, the identification of diamond. So diamond detection is done by identifying a tray with excess localized carbon. So on the figure there, what you see is a 90 millimeter kimberlite spectrum containing a 20 millimeter diamond imitator. So the black line there shows a, the average a kimberlite spectrum. Then around uh, the mark line, this one, that's where we expect uh, the carbon, the carbon peak. So this spectrum ranges from uh, 2.5 to 8 MeV. So it's just within a selected portion of a kimberlite spectrum, not the whole kimberlite spectrum. So the red line shows the excess, the average excess level within this selected portion. So around uh, the carbon uh, region there, you can see the excess is very high. So which is an indication of this uh, 20 millimeter diamond imitator. Now, detecting diamonds uh, in kimberlite of different sizes. So this table shows the results obtained uh, from radiating a uh, kimberlite of different sizes. So this kimberlite ranged from six millimeter to 150 millimeter and it contained a uh, the diamond imitators ranging from 80 millimeter to 20 millimeter. So on the table there, you can see the minimal diamond imitator was the 80 millimeter. The chances of detecting it was found to be uh, 95 percent. And large imitator, which is 20 millimeter, chances of detecting it was found to be also 95 percent. Now the operator interface. So what you see here is the user interface showing a 256 voxels, these squares here. So these 256 voxels uh, have different color codes, each color code representing a different excess level. So this excess level range from uh, zero to any number larger than three. So the white region here represents a, the empty region of the tray where the excess was zero. And the, the green region represents the region occupied by the diamond, in, by the kimberlite in a tray. And in this region, the excess can be any number less than three, but not zero. So the red region there, it shows a region where the diamond imitator is positioned. So in this region, the excess can be as high as 7.7 in this case. And the lowest here was 3.7. So this excess level is calculated using the formula given there, where excess equals to counts minus average counts divided by square root of summation of errors. Now, the conclusion. So the laboratory uh, prototype has 22 gamma detectors and a neutron generator that has uh, 256 alpha channels. This prototype uh, has a throughput of uh, around one ton per hour and with this prototype, the minimal uh, diamond which can be detected is the 80 millimeter diamond. And with this, with this technique, 
the false alarm uh, probability is around uh, 3%. And the probability to detect diamonds is around uh, 95%. So this prototype has an electric consumption of around uh, 0 0.6 kilowatt per ton of ore. So what you see here is now the commercial uh, prototype. So this prototype uh, is different from what you have seen in some slides in a GMP container. This one is a conveyor version type of a separate. So this one, it has a, a throughput of five ton per hour. So this technique is now ready to be deployed in Botswana. And for more information about my presentation, you can check our article, the application of Tech Newton in detecting diamonds in Kimberlite, which is available on the link given there. And the acknowledgement. So I would like to thank uh, DBS or Debson for the funding to visit JINR for this work. And also I would like to thank my supervisors and the other staff members here. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. It was really very interesting. Uh, are there any questions to the speaker? Yes, could I ask a question? Yes, of course, please. Okay. Uh, the question is the following. Uh, at yes, uh, five yes. ton per hour, would you be able to process all of the ore or would it be some fraction of the total ore that you normally process uh, in some other ways? Okay, so come again. I missed the yeah. first part. No. Uh, the, the question is, what yes. at five ton per hour, yes. what is the fraction of total ore that you would be processing? So would what it be... Close to 100% or would it be a smaller fraction than that? No, what's supposed to be done here is supposed to be the whole uh, ore is supposed to be processed. Okay. so Not, the not, a, not a fraction of ore, but the whole ore is supposed to be processed. Because if you process half of the ore, then it means the other ore you are not going to process. Yeah, yeah. Means you are That's right. Okay. Yes. So, so five ton per hour is the uh, optimal, I mean, it will process the whole thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there any other method that also was considered? Uh, maybe something like muon tomography or something, cosmic muon tomography? Oh, really, I don't know if I should I just include it because from what I know, there are some other methods which are just almost doing the same thing similar to this one, like which is in South Africa, the mineral patch. It also does the same uh, process like what you are trying to do here. Uh, uh, this processing is done at uh, uh, above the surface or is it underground? No, it's, it's also suitable for anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This process is suitable. Muon, I think, would require it to be overgrown. Okay. So this is an advantage. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments, remarks, questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, Motswapi, thank you for a lovely, clear presentation, personally. Um, I just want to find out the timelines for the TNM technology to be uh, deployed in Botswana. When do you intend to have that infrastructure in place? No, maybe for, okay, for this question, maybe I would like my supervisor, Professor Hillhouse, to maybe elaborate about it. Uh, hi, Sean. Yes, this is Greg. It's nice to see all my colleagues. I was a theoretical nuclear physicist, but now we're dabbling in other things. Um, so the idea is uh, he's now in Russia. So once he can leave and the borders are open, he'll come back and then we will start to talk to Debswana. They're very interested. So, and they also have the money. Debswana is the Botswana government and De Beers Diamond Company. So the idea is next year to try and uh, start doing some, uh, put it in a real mining scenario. And we hope that we, thank, Botswana thank you, covered a thousand carat diamond just a few weeks ago. 
So we hope there'll be others that, that cannot be missed and will make big money. Thanks. Okay, uh, and the other? May I ask a question? Uh, because you said that um, uh, you, I see the name of um, Sapochnikov from uh, Dubna. Uh, yes, yes. Is in Russia, are in Russia uh, they, uh, uh, use the same technology in this um, diamond mine or this is uh, your approach is completely uh, new and uh, innovative okay thank you for your question so this technique uh, the chenum technique so has been tried here in one of the mines here in russia the mirror mine mm -hmm. so that's where these really diamonds were detected mm -hmm. yes so for maybe for more information, you can get you can check the source here, detection of diamond in kimberlites. Okay. By check neutron method, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, since I have no, uh, I can't see any other question from chat or also there's no voice shouting. Uh, uh, I would like to close the session, the first session of Wednesday.